Today we are joined by a Ukrainian multidisciplinary artist, Sasha Kurmas, and he will talk a little bit about his artistic practice, about his projects in the public space, and about the impact uh, of the conflict on the Ukrainian landscape. How is it to be an artist during wartime, and how do you respond to conflict as an artist? In Sasha's practice, he studies various models of interaction with public space, social groups and communities, as well as the changing relationship between human beings and the modern world. The focus of his work is urban space, society and the tension between the individual and dominating power structures. And he uses different media to express himself, including photography, video, public intervention and performance. And before I hand over uh, the microphone to Sasha, let me tell you, let me uh, remind you that you're always welcome to uh, ask a, a question, to throw in a question. Uh, but after uh, Sasha's presentation, there will also be room to, uh, um, well, to put uh, to put your questions to uh, Sasha, uh, and we can see where the discussion will lead. Sasha, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for introduction, and thank you for everybody who joined this um, presentation. So I prepare some some images, some slides for you, and also. I will try to show the images and explain a bit. So let's start. Um, as you everybody knows, my name is Sasha. I was born in Kyiv and live in Kyiv. And um, as you probably know, now Ukraine uh, has a kind of complicated times. We have a war with Russia. And yeah, but uh, in my projects that I'm gonna show you, it will be some projects that was done before the war. It was different kind of projects and uh, different kind of uh, methods of work that I that I use. So I just try to explain like who I am, what I'm doing from different kind of perspective. So I create this kind of uh, diagram uh, just to try to visualize how I look at my artistic practice in general. So here you can see what kind of things influence me um, and what I'm doing. Like, so here's, you see that like, I'm really much uh, working with uh, public space, but at the same time, I'm present my works in some institution, artistic institution. Also, I work individually. Sometimes I work in collaboration. I really like to do some collaboration with other artists or activists or uh, some kind of professionals from other discipline or some uh, people, just random people from the street. So I really like this kind of joint practice. The main focus of my work is social and political issues and um, kind of variety or various kind of models of interaction with the public space and um, some people around or communities. So um, I also very much interested in doing some artistic books. So I do also self-publication like artistic run book, like some small artistic books. Also I doing some books from, from from different kind of objects. So it's really hard to say that it is like art book, but it somehow looks like art book. So I will show you in this presentation how it works. Uh, what else? Mm, I think, yeah, that's probably all. Let's start with the work. So I will start with the work that was done in 2012. Um, it was a work that was, um, it was made in Minsk. Minsk, it's the capital of Belarus. It's the eastern part of Europe. And the um, idea behind this work is like, I have a trip to Belarus, like to Minsk for my first time. I never been there before. And I know just like few people there. So I, I, like, I buy a ticket to Minsk. And before I write a mail to one of my friend, if he is uh, have a free time on the weekend, like just for a few hours to show me something around. So when I come to Minsk, I call to my friends. Uh, he come to meet me in the train station. And then um, 
I have just few hours, so I plan not to stay like long, so not spend like day or even few days. I just want to come shortly for a few hours and then go back. So it was kind of artistic decision. Um, so when we met, uh, I um, tried to make some kind of in, some kind of work, artistic work in the public space, but um, I choose like this kind of central street in the, in Minsk. There is like main alley, and it's like really huge, very touristic, very uh, like. Uh, very popular place when if people come into me they always walk in this kind of in this kind of way and it was for me kind of challenge to do something interesting with this kind of banal and boring city center role so before starting um, walk uh, i asked him to put a black band on my eyes and then i took his hand and we went to a walk so while doing the walk uh, my friend uh, explained me what was around us. So if there was some architectural object or some historical monuments or any kind of interesting place that he found interesting, he always explained me during this kind of walking tour. And uh, when I feel that this, this like place could be something interesting for me, I took my uh, film analog camera and took a pictures in the direction where this object was. So um, that's how this picture looks like. So uh, I, will, I will try to finish like about this kind of work. So when we, when we finish the work, it, it takes for us around two hours or hours and something. I don't really remember exactly how much time, but it was at least like hour and something. So we come back to the train station so like I said, bye uh, to my friend and take a train and go back to Kyiv. And when I come back to Kyiv, I develop this kind of films, film roles and compare like my memories that I get during the walk because it was really fresh with the images that I received during this kind of walking tour. This is kind of things. Uh, yeah, it was a kind of artistic decision for me to make this kind of exploration of the cities where I never been. Yeah, um, next work, um, it's uh, some instruction, photographic instruction, or I could say this is a tutorial how to make a key from old uh, dryer for clothes. And not just a key, it's a special key that you can use to open uh, city light boxes, advertising light boxes that I think everywhere in every city you have this kind of light boxes. There is different lock system, but in general, uh, light boxes looks pretty the same. Uh, so here uh, you can see uh, like drawing with dimensions. Like uh, if you really impress it, you can make a picture or make a screenshot and use this uh, key for your own purpose. Or if you really want to. Uh, to open something like spaces like that, you can use it. And this is some example, uh, some documentation of my intervention with advertising spaces uh, during the uh, election campaign to Ukrainian parliament in 2012. So there you can see like, uh, like how, how it works. So I just come during the day, open the light box, changing the like original poster for a fake poster or let's say like artistic poster poster that uh, was made by me and this is kind of how it looks at the end so there was a poster of communistic party of ukraine former communistic party now they not really exist and not really present uh, and there is like um, you can read explanation what it's written so um there is a text uh, which says an employment for victims of Chernobyl disasters, the prosperity and happiness for the oligarchs, Communistic Party of Ukraine. Uh, what for Communistic Party of Ukraine? Or, sorry, or another one. In this poster, I took original poster and uh, changed 
these images of happy family. So I keep the original slogans and logos and everything. I just change this. If you look closely, you will see that there is like some kind of problem with the images of people in, in this poster. Oh, uh, sorry, previous one. Or this kind of poster. This poster was made in Vienna, in Austria. So I make, I walk in the street and uh, find some people who make some kind of weird picture of some homeless guy. So I took a picture and then print it and put in the light boxes or this kind of images like when, when one person enjoying cocktail, look in the phone and person on the background begging and asking for the help. Yeah, next work, it's a uh, work that was uh, made in Košice. Košice it's a city in eastern part of Slovakia, Eastern Europe. And this city uh, very well known because the large community of Roma people, Romani people or Roma people live there. And this is a neighborhood where these people living. And this neighborhood called Lunik 9. So, all like the city structure like uh, looks like that. So there is a different neighborhoods and uh, different neighborhoods has a different kind of name. And all name is Lunik, just different numbers, Lunik one, Lunik two, Lunik three, and so on. And this Lunik where this Roma community living called Lunik nine. So in this Lunik nine uh, neighborhood, there is like a place where live this kind of Roma people and this area has a pretty low standards of living. The service like gas or hot water or electricity cut off because the majority of inhabitants are not paying the rent or utilities fees. So the life is really hardcore there, but the most radical things is this is a wall. So this is a wall that was built by residents from Lunik 8. It's a neighborhood like really close by, but kind of different uh, people live there. So uh, um, like people from neighborhood Lunik 8 build a wall between Lunik 8 and Lunik 9 just to segregate the Roma community. And this uh, wall is kind of very well known in, in Slovakia they sometimes call this wall like anti-Roma wall or anti-Gypsy wall. And uh, yeah, uh, so when I, when I found this wall uh, and found the context, like the reason why people build this, I immediately decided to somehow react to the situation and we build a bridge, wooden bridge that could uh, help for people from one neighborhood cross the uh, fans to another one. So that's how it looks. Another work, it's more kind of spontaneous work. It was uh, made in Katowice, it's Poland. Uh, Katowice, it's also eastern part of the Poland and uh, kind of good, beautiful city, but the, there were, were many advertising uh, banners. And one of the barriers uh, that I found, it was this image that you see in the screen. So there was a, like advertising banners about English uh, classes for Polish people. So if you want to learn English, you can call by that number and uh, get something. So I always have a problem with this advertising because um, I don't like it very much when there's a, in the city, many kind of advertising posters or anything connected to advertising. So I cut off the portrait of the guy and leave it in the same wall, but the rest of uh, kind of text and platforms and everything just put in the trash. So it was my kind of reaction to this kind of situation. Another work uh, was done in Graz. It's a city in Austria. So when I walk in, in the city center in Graz, I met a man that you can see in the center of the images. And he was sitting on the street and begging. So I come to him, start to talk to him, give some money, 
and asked if he could put uh, this glass away and take and hold this picture for a while. And like uh, he kindly agreed. He said like, yeah, why not? So um, I just took some random photo from my bag. This is image itself, uh, not really important for me. Of course, uh, it could it could be any kind of image, but at that moment I have this just kind of images. So I give these images to that guy, and he hold for a few minutes in the street and showing these images for people around. So, of course, I I understood that this kind of small situation don't really change the social position of that person. But what was more important for me. Uh, is to create the situation when the person for a few minutes turn it from a person who is needed help and who asking for something into a person who would show something for people around. Yeah, that's how it was looks. And another work that also was uh, made with the people who asking for for help, but. These people was from my city, from Kiev, from my neighborhood. Um, it's also people who begging on the streets. And there was um, like really many people. And uh, when I met a person with some kind of cardboard, with a text written over where someone asking to help, I asked it like how I could help. And if person say like I need money, I give some money. If person say I need some food, I buy food, and give the food to this person. And um, but when I give money or give a food, I always ask him if I can if I can take the piece of paper with me. And usually people say like yes. So I give like for example I buy some food, give food for the person, and person give me this kind of piece of paper. But there was a few people who say no, and I think they say no because they really use it like a kind of way to make money. So it's not really because they need some kind of help, they need just money and they use this kind of piece of paper just because it's kind of job. It's really hard to say, but I, it looks like. So I start collecting this kind of cardboard with inscription and when I collected a large, a large number of the cardboard sheets, I made a book of it. So that's how this book looks like. So there is a different text that just I put together. Yeah, and make it like book. I call it book. Of course, it's not a book, but it looks like book. And I look at this like a book because there is a text you can read. There is a, every page, different story, different situation. Yeah. And another book, uh, which is also really hard to call it book, but I call it book, like I call it artistic book. And this book was uh, made in Yerevan. Yerevan, it's a city in Armenia. It's the capital uh, of Armenia. And when I come to Armenia, I have some like like free time and I walk on the street and start to collect something that I found interesting in the street. So it was some kind of uh, newspaper or piece of paper with some text or just candy packing or some kind of flower, everything, everything. I just walk in and collecting materials and then put it together and make kind of book of it. So it's, it's a book uh, from the objects and materials that I found in the city of Yerevan. Yeah. Uh, another work was uh, done in France in the city Besançon. Besançon it's a city in the eastern part of France and I was invited there by local cultural in organizations and doing some every summer they're doing some kind of artistic festival they invited artists around the world and this artist should do something in the public space any kind of artistic projects like you can do some performance you can do murals you can do uh, some talks whatever you want so i was invited to present something in the street and when i come there for the first time i start walking around and exploring the city how usually i do because 
for my work, it's really important the context where I'm doing my work and when I presented my work. So I always try to work with this kind of local context. And I always try to make this work that somehow resonated with the context where this, where this work is presented. So I started to explore the city and found and find like this small camp of people, like refugees who's living in the street and just waiting for this official refugee status. So in this picture, you, you see the cross. It's a place when I decided to make the work. And from the left, you see this kind of camp when they're living. There is a police department and there is this kind of local authority who is responsible to giving the status, official status. And people who live in these refugee camps, they could spend like weeks and months for this waiting, waiting process. So I come to these people and start to talk slowly, step by step, we start to communicate and somehow we make this kind of connection. I cannot say that we became kind of friends. No, absolutely not. But we make this kind of relation between each other. So I come day by day, talk to them, buy some food, communicate, asking what they need, how I can help. And somehow they found that I'm artist, that I'm come to do something in the city. And we decided together to do something. So I propose them if, if they want to do something with me, they say like, yes. And I think a while and for a while, I decided to make some kind of intervention in the public space, not so far from this refugee camp. And uh, for me, it was important not to make work about this kind of people, about these refugees, but for me, more important to do something together and something for that people. It was my intention. So we chose a place uh, in the cross of the road uh, and uh, start to work. So we decided to make this kind of intervention it looks like memorial. It's kind of um, kind of temporary memorial. You you can find in every part of the of the Europe or even around the world. I think this kind of things people usually do in the place where some tragic events or touristic attacks or catastrophe happens. So I choose this kind of form for the work because. This type of memorial is always anonymous, so you never know who made it, because there was always many people who come in and living something in the street. And this kind of uh, uh, object always very expressive, like, I mean, it looks very like expressive from the people who work in, around. And it's always very spontaneously arising in the city. So I made this kind of, so, I made this decision to make this kind of work and then we start to work together. So we made collages, text, um, some putting images with some kind of uh, short notes. So we make this kind of a lot of things and then put it all together. And it also install this work. So this is the kind of details that you can find. So we use the French because it was a France, but sometimes we also put some text in English. Mm, but what happens then? Uh, oops. Uh, after a few days, when these local authorities and officials were found this work, they probably was not really happy because we make it without any permission. And for a while, uh, like they just remove it. They just put all this thing away. So the work itself live on the street up to one week. And they just like, then this kind of uh, officials, they just call to this utilities uh, service and they just quickly put everything away. And this, is, I'm going to present you last work uh, for this presentation. Um, it's a video. Uh, so let's walk uh, this video together and then I will explain you what was it about.
Yeah, I hope you enjoy this video uh, and few words what it was about. So this work was uh, a performance that was organized by me and some of my friends. So I buy, I buy it. It was my car and people who destroying the car, it was my friends. So we decided to make this kind of action in the public space without any permission. And uh, the idea of this, of this work was, it was kind of my reaction to this chaotic and uncontrolled parking around the city. In Kiev in 2017, there was a huge problem with the, with the cars. There was just too many cars, like all city was full by, by cars and they park everywhere, they block uh, sidewalks, they, they, some people park, uh, park in these cars in the park. Uh, so it was really, really like problematic moment for the city life. So I decided to make some kind of artistic kind of reaction to the situation. So we found the car, I buy, I buy the car, we found it like a, like a space in the city center and make this kind of uh, action. So on the one hand, I was wondering to see what was, what will, uh, what will public react to this kind of spontaneous manifestation of aggression. And if will be any kind of reaction or if some people really come and say like, stop guys, don't do nothing. So it was also kind of, of interesting things. And the second things, I, I was also wondering how fast like police will react to the situation. So in my plan, in my sketch, we have to finish this work in the, in the moment when police will come. But the problem was that police don't come like so quick. So the guy finished des destroying the car and left because police didn't come and police just come in after 10 minutes when the work was really done. So yeah. But in general, I I was just enjoying like the the situation and how some people just destroying the car because it was it was too much. I mean, these cars and everything. I like more city where is no cars where just people can walk and use just bicycle. So that's it. And uh, yes, this is a final slide uh, that I want to show to you. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Yeah, and if you have a question, please ask. I'm happy to answer. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Sasha. That was a, quite a whirlwind through only a short uh, or a small collection of uh, your extensive uh, uh, amount of work that uh, if you're interested, uh, you can see many of these uh, on his website, sashakurmas.com, if I'm not mistaken, .com, right? Yes, yes, .com, right. Um, and there is quite a lot more. Uh, now, I have a few, as, as I said before, if you have questions, just uh, throw up your hand or uh, jump in or put something in the chat. Um, but I have a few questions to begin with. Uh, and the first one is um, that uh, pretty much every piece that you showed us uh, involves an intervention or creating a situation uh, with which you are creating quite powerful statements uh, commenting on you know, particular aspects of society. Um, 
but how do you uh, do you consider and and if so how uh, do you see engaging the public or an audience after the creation of your work that the outside of the um, uh, creation of the situation or the intervention how do you see engaging the public with your work after the creation of your work but why after i try to engage people in creation of the work yeah, yeah. i mean no, i understand I'm, i mean for me the pro process of creation something in the public space it's like it's a magical mysterious process so i very like do something with people and of course i'm wondering how this kind of work itself uh, work in the public space so um after after i present my work uh, in the public space the work start to live kind of in independent life autonomous life so i don't really can control it um and um, mm, i have some kind of work i don't put in this presentation this work but i have some work like of communication so i i try to um, briefly explain how it was so i walk in the street and found one inscription in, in the wall it was uh it was in austria i forgot the, the city probably it was also in Graz, and there was a kind of inscription on the wall when someone write like smash capitalism so i like this this kind of statement you know i i look at this and say like hmm, interesting so i take my markers and write down like question like okay how and in a few days when i come back i see that some person uh write me answer back so he or she write like stop scene start uh, how it was stop or stop watching start uh, doing something or start start thinking i i, I really forgot uh, what was the answer and i also write an answer back so we start to communicate on the walls with with with, with someone with the audience actually through this kind of inscription in the text like we just write something in the walls and in a few days there was a kind of new answer coming up and that's how i was engaged in kind of uh collaboration with my audience but usually i i don't really control the process so you know when i make something and leave it the work itself start to live kind of independent life some people can destroy it some people can add something some people can um i don't know do whatever they want because you know public space is space for everybody everybody can do what they want i mean if it's not really harm some someone so yeah compared to i mean i don't know actually how to answer <laughs> to that question because for me a public space it's a place for the communication so i i like do something for people i like to present it and i like when people somehow uh, reacted reacted to this work or if people start to transform this work or people i mean any kind of uh con communication with the piece is is is, is, is okay it's okay can you say something part. about uh, your piece uh, weapon of the proletariat was there a public reaction to that that you were able to see and can you explain the piece as well i think if i sharing the screen probably i can show this picture from my website right mm -hmm. uh, it will be much 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 more easy just to show how it works Mm, okay yeah mm, let's find uh, let's find this work where it is uh, ah this one so it's like very simple very simple uh, gesture so there is a two pictures from two different cities one picture it's from the street of kiev and the second picture it's uh, from city of yerevan both of the cities kiev and yerevan was um 
was a place of huge political demonstration and uh, a huge political kind of protest campaign. In Kyiv, it was in 20, the last one, it was 2013, 2014, and year one, it was a few years before. So uh, during the protest, uh, people who occupied like a yard, a central square in, uh, in the city, they use like they firstly they just occupied the space and tried to make the statement that they don't want to, i mean if you know the history of ukrainian protests they, there was the first huge protest campaign because our president at that time his name is Viktor yanukovych uh, decided not to um, collaborate with your Euro European Union and make more closer relation to Russia. People was extremely angry and that's how the protest started. So the position of people was like, they don't want to be with Russia, they want to be with European Union. It was kind of main point for the, and main and starting point for this kind of protest campaign. So the, the protest was like for a few months and there was like hot, like hot time when police tried to uh, hit people and try to, I don't know, somehow to clean the square and people start to use like kind of bricks to defend themselves. So the bricks was kind of a symbol. Also, there was a very famous work by Soviet uh, sculptor and architect. I think he's just a sculptor or artist, not sure if he was an architect. His name was Ivan Shader. And it's like very, very famous uh, sculpture that uh, called the cobblestone is a weapon of the proletariat. And it's very really beautiful work. I, I, I can show you how it looks if you see my screen. Mm. That's how the work, original work looks like. Uh, let's find a beautiful picture. This one looks good. Yes, this is how this works looks like. So it was like uh, my, it was my reference actually, and it was my link to this kind of famous uh, sculpture. But at the same time, it was also my comment to the situation uh, that happens in my city, in my country, and also in Armenia in that time. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Billy, I see your question. Uh, I'll hand it to you in a minute. Uh, I have one more question uh, for Sasha, uh, and that is that um, uh, almost all the pieces that you discussed uh, were set in Eastern Europe, but uh, almost none in uh, Ukraine. Uh, except for one, I think, and this one, and maybe uh, the second. Um, but I think there are two pieces that, uh, are, well, at least two pieces, but there are more, but two pieces that I appreciate it very much that I think are worthwhile mentioning, particularly in the light of the uh, 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 military conflict, but also the cultural conflict between Ukraine and um, Russia, uh, which maybe you can say a few things about. The first is the Temple of the Transfiguration, and the second is the Hostage. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the Temple of Transfiguration. This is like one of the freshest work uh, that they present uh, this spring in, in Berlin. That's how it looks. It's a church uh, that was made uh, like from old Soviet military track. So this, like the box, uh, this uh, was used in um, Soviet cars that uh, has a name gas uh, gas something I, I really forgot the number gas 80 or 8 or 60 something like that so I use this uh, cabin with a Soviet car and put crosses orthodox crosses over and also inside I installed like kind of icons and all things that you can usually found in the church, in Orthodoxy church in uh, in Ukraine or in Russia, and also have a video when we can you can you can watch how it looks from all all sides all sides sorry uh, 
Okay, so uh, now I will try to explain what was the idea behind. So, uh, Orthodoxy Christianity is kind of one of the main religion in Ukraine, but Orthodox Christianity uh, has a kind of sides. So, not sides, confession. Um, there is like Ukrainian independent Orthodox Church, and there is like Ukrainian Orthodox Church of most of patriarchy. So this kind of Ukrainian Church of most of Moscow Patriarchy, uh, like connected to the Russian Orthodox Church, it's kind of like like really close uh, connected uh, institution, I would say, very close. So uh, this Church of Moscow Patriarchy, they was always on the side of Russia. They always. For example, in 2014, when we start like this war with Russia, this church, Russian church, uh, always call this not war, but they always call it like civil conflict. And that's why many people like uh, think about this kind of war situation, like a, like conflict inside Ukraine, just between different Ukrainians. Also, church use uh, this political situation and also try to make this kind of separatistic kind of movement movement in the eastern part of ukraine so they also say like uh they share this ideology of ruski mir it's like it's uh, could be translated like russian word or russian order so the idea about that there is no kind of ukrainian there is no kind of belarusian people we all kind of one nation, we all brothers, we all Slavic brothers, we all the same, there is no kind of, uh, the Ukrainians, it's not really exist, we all kind of Slavic brother because we all belong to the one church and one God and everything. And this church also was kind of very powerful, powerful in the propaganda, so they do not direct propaganda, for example, they don't say like, okay, Please vote for for Putin, but they always uh, like in the liturgy, in this ceremony, Christian like ceremony when you come to the church, they always like uh, pray for like Russian uh, Russian. Um, I forgot the name of that guy. Like uh, in Catholic Christianity, you have a Pope, but in Orthodox Christianity, you have a patriarch like um but i forgot the names of this russian patriarch probably his name is kirill yes kirill. his name is kirill and they always pray for this kirill and they always like say that like uh they always try to make this kind of um put this ideology ideology on the table about it like don't don't think about like ukraine like independent country uh, try to be close to the Russia and all things like that. So, church was a kind of one of the instrument when make this war is is possible. And now, since uh, 20 of February, there was a many cases when Orthodox priest was collaborated with Russian troops. And for example, in in the spring when uh, Russians come from Belarusian side, try to occupy like uh, uh, northern part of Ukraine and try to 
come closer to Kyiv, uh, or to, like priests from Orthodox Church from Moscow Patriarchy, they always collaborated with these troops. So there was like many, many, many stories uh, how, how, how they collaborated together. But for me, it was important to show like this kind of object when I put together like military object and this Christianity object and made kind of, let's say, sculpture or installation that try that, that, that showing another side of religion of, or Christianity. Um, and another work, uh, the hostage. Uh, let's find this. Uh, where is it? Uh, wait a moment. Ah, this, that's it. So this is a work uh, that was done in 2014. It was the time when the war just started. It's a time when the war started in the eastern part of Ukraine. And it, it, it's this region where the war started. It's called Donbass region. So when the war started, many people from those Donbass region moved to another city. Many people come to Kyiv, many people come to another city that was not so far from Donbass. And uh, like uh, there was a kind of really tense relation between people from Donbass region with the uh, citizens from another city, because like many Ukrainians look at people from Donbass like a collaborator, or they look at people from Donbass like a people who cannot protect themselves. And um, yeah, there was many different kind of things like uh, between this kind of people. And um, for example, if you come from, from Donbass to Kyiv and you want to find apartment and you want to rent apartment, you have to show your passport and in passport in ukrainian passport there was always kind of line of registration and it's written where you was born and where you registered and where and when you show your passport and if it was written that you were registered in donbas region usually people say like no they don't want to give you apartment and people really struggling quite a, like like really many people struggling um and I, I also somehow want to react to the situation. I want to make some kind of artwork about that. So I, I found people from this Donbass region who has a problem when they moved to Kyiv and we make this kind of uh, intervention. They stay like a hostage in the city, in a public space for a while, at least like for 10, 15 minutes. And all people who is passing by, they just look at them. and. Yeah, it was kind of performance, I would say. Uh, but if some, there was not so really many communication between uh, like uh, people on the street with the people who stayed in like a, who, who performing. So, but there was a few people who just come, like what is that? What is what is work about or what what is going on? So when they come to one of them of this free uh, performer these guys start to explain what is what about that we're doing performative work and try to explain the kind of concept behind yeah but it was also kind of my reaction to the to the situation that was in ukraine and also why i'm working a lot in ukraine because i mostly live in ukraine and uh, living and working in ukraine and of course i use public space because it's a space that i love i i also have a background uh, in graffiti uh, subcultural so when I was a teenager, I, I did a lot of graffiti things. So graffiti what, what was my kind of first experience with artistic uh, practice. So I come to art from graffiti. That's why I still have this kind of strong connection to the street and still love to do something in the street. Thanks, Sasha. Billy. Yeah. Love, 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 love your presentation and your work is great and um, really interesting and thank you. Um, the, the, the temple thing made me smile because I was in Greece a while, a few years back and uh, they have these, um, this company that creates temples that you can take and erect in your backyard. And I really wanted to bring one home and put it on in front of my house on Tankerton Slopes and have a Greek church. <laughs> Sadly, my husband wouldn't let me, and I don't think the council would either, but 
it just seemed like such a great idea to be able to have your own little church and um, prefab, you know, choose it, decor, and just put it up. But yeah, lovely. Um, the question I ask you, which is something that troubles me quite a lot when I work with vulnerable people, is, is squaring it with artic artistic practice. It's um, how to um, make people truly collaborators mm -hmm. and not feel like I'm using them for my work. It's a tricky one. Yeah. You need to build a relation between you and people. It's just one way. There is no way because if you don't make the relation between you and people with you working, it's absolutely impossible to do something together. Because like there's like actually two ways how artists usually collaborate. They hire someone, so they just pay money and ask him to do something, or they inspire him like people with ideas and uh, try to make this kind of relations and say like okay look i have this kind of brilliant idea and you're trying to explain what you want to do and you try to um, explain like how it is important for you and how it could be important also for that person or how it could be important also for community or for the social uh, network around and if people really like idea, they always collaborate it. If not, they say like, oh, sorry, it's not my piece of tea. So sorry, it's it's not my things. But I always try to work in that way when, when, I, when I make kind of relation between me and people. I also have one experience with the work. For example, uh, for, um, I was in, in Switzerland uh, five years ago and um, I, try to collaborate with people who is uh, working on the street, you know, that kind of strange work, like sex workers or people who selling drugs or people who doing this kind of, you know, they work like a performer. So they imitate like, like sculpture. So they freeze for a while and pretending that they sculpture. So this kind of actors or some street musicians this kind of uh, people who are using the street public space like a space for work so i come to them and start to talk to them but usually they're not really interested in in talking they because when they talk to me they're losing time they, at the, the time they can make money the money it's one of the reasons why they come into the street and why they doing something in the street so when i realize that the motivation is money for that people I just give them money and say like, okay, if you're really, really like looking for money, take the money and please take a rest for a while, for 10, 15 minutes. And when they take the money, it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. And for me, it was like, like magical things, you know, you just give them money for person and then person could relax and can talk to you. And then finally you have kind of this communication. It was also a kind of magical thing for me. And especially with the sex workers, it was like super cool because for them, it's very strict. Like, you know, if you come, they have a price, straight price. So if you need something, give money, give money and then talks. So I give like, and the price in Switzerland quite uh, expensive. So I pay like 500, like, no, no, 550. Uh, or 100 or 150 francs just for person for 15 minutes rest just because it's a, like normal price for them for this kind of job yeah so uh, my answer is relation building relation is just one way difficult though to empower people when you're paying the money yeah it's i know it's that's a problem but some for some people it's just one one way how you can do something with them you know if they really interested in money they don't interested in some artistic production they don't interest in making some idea they just interested in money so you give them money they give what what they want and then you can at least talk or do something but with, I, I i also agree that uh, money it's not the, like a right fair way to do something with the people Mm, I use it like a few times, but I prefer to work more in kind of equal relation when you're both in the kind of the same 
in the same position. I also wondered how people reacted when you created the bridge over that wall. People what use it. They what not was the reaction it. to you creating this? Little... They just start to use it because it was a useful object, you know? They see that there is like a bridge and they can cross this fence and they start just crossing the fence over the bridge. It was kind of very useful uh, object, very useful uh, like piece of art, but it's not really art. It, it just useful things for me. And but did uh, it stay up? Did nobody try and take it down? Like, but why? They just need to cross the street. No, but if they put the wall up, they put it up for a reason. You then create a bridge over it. <laughs> the people who put up that wall are not going to exactly be applauding you and saying, yes, thank you so much, are they? Yeah, but you know, I think uh, nobody actually really care about things. They, they, when, when they saw that there is a bridge, they immediately get that like, ah, okay, someone make a bridge so we can use it like a normal bridge. Nobody even thinks that it was kind of artistic idea or something mm. belongs to art. They use it like really, like, 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 like bridge itself. So for them, it was just like the easiest way cross uh, this, like the street. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Welcome. It's been lovely, lovely to chat with you. Lovely to meet you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Sarah, do you want to follow up on this? I think you just kind of covered all of my <laughs> questions that I was getting at. So I'm good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I also had um, a question on the, the same. <laughs> and that um, um, grass has been mowed from in front of my feet now as well. Uh, I, I have a practical question. Where are your books? That is uh, mm -hmm. the, the book on Armenia, the book, uh, the, uh, I think you mentioned it, right? Traveler's Encyclopedia, which was about uh, Armenia. Uh, mm -hmm. And also uh, the book with uh, the the placards that uh, people in the street were using. Where are those two books? Are they at home or are they at home? Traveling at home. home, at home. Okay. I I present like these books in some exhibition, uh, but I keep it at home because like uh, it's the safest. I'm not sure that it's the safest place at the moment, but uh, mm -hmm. it it's at home. Yeah. Um, more maybe, um, uh, again, uh, if you have a question, just throw in your question, put it in the chat, um, or put up your hand, um, uh, you're very welcome yes. to intervene. Um, one piece that I also appreciated, uh, two pieces that I also appreciated that are a little bit similar, I think. Uh, one is living with the fear of being harmed by other humans. Oh, it's, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard work. Uh, I can, I can, I can show it, but... Really? Maybe an easy, sorry, maybe an easier one uh, is unknown incidents. Uh, sorry, again. Unknown you incidents. Uh, you like this kind of uh, things. Okay. Well, they're, they're very much about conflict, right? And uh, we were, I promised conflict in this uh, uh, um, uh, cafe. Yes. So uh, I'm pulling in some conflict here. Okay. Or, or the, the appearance of conflict, really. I, I will explain uh, briefly about the work. So this is the installation that they made in the city of Helsinki. Uh, this is kind of installation that remind you about something horrible things that happens in the street. So I just put some bl blood on the street and sometimes I also combine it with kind of a uh, piece of clothes or everything that somehow can give um give kind of impression that there is something happens and for me this work was um very much about ukraine because it was a time when in ukraine was like really a hardcore like time in the west like in the eastern part of ukraine where there was like really like horrible fighting between the russian and ukrainians and um, like in ukrainian news it was always on the headline. So like people talk about like very much, but when I come to Finland, there was absolutely no information about that. Absolutely kind of calm uh, media, uh, 
so no 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 so much information about ukraine and not so much information about like what is really going going on at the moment in in the eastern part of ukraine so i decided to make this kind of like my reaction to this to this kind of situation when um, when i'm like a person like a citizen of ukraine coming from this kind of like horrible place and I find myself like absolutely in the situation when nobody cares what is going on outside of, of, of the country. Now the, everything is changed. Now Finland became a part of NATO, Sweden became a part of NATO, and they really much supported Ukraine. But five years ago, it was an absolutely completely different situation. And, and this was kind of installation, this kind of installation in the public space was my kind of reaction to the to the situation in, fin in, in Finland. So I want to put this kind of attention to this kind of problem, to this war and to all of the struggling that Ukrainian people uh, taking from 2014. Yes, so now the situation is, is completely changed, like uh, all Baltic countries, all northern countries, of Europe, they all kind of supported Ukraine, like so, and like for me, it was also like a, like a big news, like when this year Sweden and Finland, country who was always neutral, who don't want to be any kind of in any way involved in some kind of military coalition, they they say like we won't become part of NATO alliance, and it was kind of. It it's it means a lot actually, and for people in Ukraine and for rest of Europe and for understanding what is Russia, and uh, what kind of dangers it can bring to the European community. Thanks. You say uh, you um, uh, used blood. Was it real blood or was it? Uh, it was a, it was the blood that they buy in a shop in in Helsinki. I'm not familiar enough with uh, the, the the retail environment of Helsinki to know whether that means it is real blood or fake blood. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, uh, it, it was blood of some animal. I oh I really? Uh, I don't know. It was it was they sell it like Coca Cola. I mean, they sell in this kind of uh, piece of in bottles. And it's written blood. I, I, I don't know. It it's it looks like blood actually, and it, it it's has this, this kind of smell like a blood. But why why they sell it and for what? I I really don't know. But I found it in a, like a supermarket. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I do know that. I don't know uh, if it's popular in Ukraine, but uh, a very um, popular, well, very I mean, a reasonably popular dish in Hungary as well as in. Um, the Slovak Republic is fried blood. So maybe I'm vegetarian. Maybe. Look, I'm vegetarian. I don't eat meat. <laughs> I I don't eat anything that's connected to the like uh, to the bodies of animals. So no, I don't know. Maybe some people doing it, but I don't. Well, those those fins. Uh, all right. There's and, another and question. Then... Another Let's, question. Please. How do you feel as a vegetarian? I'm a vegetarian using blood from animals in your it was, work. It was a horrible. It was really a nightmare. Like I, I, when I make this work, it was for me like, ah, uh, I can't even uh, like uh, use it. But I, I think it was important to make for, like, like for me, it was important to make the artwork itself. But the process was really hardcore for me. I. I, I, after like I make this installation, I take like a few hours just to walk outside and try to calm down because for me it was like really everything that somehow looks like a blood or everything that somehow connected to this kind of meat make me like like really um, I don't even know if I if I know the correct word how to express my my feeling, but it's 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 horrible for me. Yeah, I know, but when I think about art, when I think about this work, this it's a kind of goal for me. So if I have a goal, I have to finish it and then I can calm down. But uh, when I'm working, I'm just close like my ass. It's like, okay, I'm concentrated. I have to do it because it's important. So Sasha, do it. And I'm doing it. The other, it's a really silly question, this, but I have to ask it because it's in my head. 
this is did you clean up all that blood afterwards or did you just leave it there i i leave and start to wait if some people come nobody come like there was some people i mean almost all works was not really uh, uh found by local citizen i mean if you ever been in finland or in helsinki like this this is a city where people not truly really present in the public space all street almost empty there's not so many people and i don't know it before so when i come and make this kind of work and i start to sit and waiting for some kind of reaction people not really found this work itself so i present this work like a photography work but in real life it was not really it was not really somehow reacted to the audience so and uh, i wait till evening and when i come to the next date it was cleaned so it was cleaned uh, i think by 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 these people who clean in the streets i i wondered if, if people had come and cleaned it up because it's always interesting I, going back to um Babak's question about what happens to the work afterwards it's always interesting to find out you know when you put out work out there yeah but you, you does it say does it get moved absolutely like when you do something in the street i am also wondering how it how it works so mm -hmm. of course if i leave something i'm waiting i'm waiting just to see if there will be any reaction if, if there will be kind of connection to the work or if people somehow found this work or mm -hmm. for them it will be something like kind of that they don't see so i sit and wait and surprisingly but there was no real connection to the local citizen what about the posters i mean the posters that you obviously used did you have to pay to put those posters in those boxes no, no. and did they leave them there yes so they didn't but, notice what you put up so with the posters it's a different story so like um i have a key I show you like in, in this presentation how I made this key. So I use this key and open this like light boxes to put my pictures and the closer boxes. So of course I also spend some time around just to see if people see some difference between uh, images or if they see my images. But um, usually people not really watch on advertising. They don't really look at it. Sometimes yes, but usually not. And with the posters, it's also like very different. For example, when I leave my poster in Vienna, they was in the street uh, like a few weeks. But in Kiev, it was different. For example, some poster was changed in the next day. Some poster was uh, stay for a few days or for even for a week. But in Kiev, like people who is caring for this advertising, they always checking everything. Mm -hmm. So. They come in and looking if the poster it it is present or not. So in Kiev it's more kind of different situation. But in Vienna I, I was surprised it was like up to one month. This it was the same place. They just changes. They they change my poster just when they put like kind of new advertising. So that's that's it. I think I want to slowly wrap up because we're starting to lose people, um, but, or, even though they were American, but um, uh, nothing bad about Americans, of course. Um, there's maybe a lighter piece that is nice uh, to end with, uh, and that is Flaneuse. Yes, it's a beautiful work. Let's walk, uh, let's see together uh, this one. So this is a work uh, I just glue to Euro on a shoe of my friend and ask her just to walk for a few weeks. And she walking for, for a few weeks. And after the, the, this coin was almost uh, a rise. So it was this kind of uh, actions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, how, what to say more. I think it's super kind of simple gesture and uh, super simple things. Yeah. Uh, well, I, it, it's indeed uh, very straightforward, but I like it because it's uh, very much uh, 
a walking piece, um, but it also comments on uh, um, well the use of um, uh, commerce or money in the public sphere um, and um, well how she is trampling on the, on on exactly that. So I, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Sasha. Um, if uh, the, the, yeah, well, does the, the hardcore of uh, attendance that is still here have uh, maybe one or two more, or just one question for Sasha? Mm -hmm. Viv throws open her camera, which makes me think that maybe she has a question. No, Viv does not have a question. All right. Um, it's uh, they've all been answered actually very well. I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's really wonderful work and. You know the way that you explain it is so inspiring. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Da David applauded, but also raised his hand. So I'm also wondering if David uh, wants to throw in a question, or was he just appreciative of uh, Sasha's presentation? David um, um, wisely does not respond. Uh, in, in that case, uh, thanks again. Uh, <laughs> Sasha, I really, uh, uh, for me, I find all your work very inspiring. Um, uh, it's, um, they're wonderful interventions. Uh, they create the beautiful imagery. Uh, and they're also uh, all extremely relevant. Uh, and of course, particularly the ones that relate to the conflict in the Ukraine, even those that, were, that you created like eight years ago uh, at the start of the conflict, like when the Crimea was um, uh, occupied and when the Donbass was invaded. Um, they they research they can resurface again with uh, new relevance for the current situation in Ukraine. Um, so yeah, as I said, very inspiring. Very happy uh, for you to show to have shown some of your work. Um, and I uh, I'm very much looking forward to what's next. Uh, if um, I don't think any of us is in Germany, but uh, such as currently exhibiting or about or starting to exhibit in two days, I think September one, right, in uh, Bonn. Um, and he was just in Berlin uh, and is heading back to the Ukraine in mid-September. Um, before I hand over for the last words to you, Sasha, uh, let me try um, to convince uh, those of you who are still here uh, or mention to those of you who are still here that we are starting Soundwalk September in two days. Sasha is having an exhibition, but we are doing it virtually, mostly. Uh, in one of these, um, we'll, on September 6, I think, Viv, is it September 6th, next week? Yeah. Um, Viv, Viv, as well as, uh, as um, uh, Sarah and Mario and a few others who were not in today's call will uh, talk about their winning work from last year, uh, last year's Soundwalk September. That's a week from today. And that is free for everyone to attend, thanks to uh, our sponsor, Echoes. Uh, there's a bunch of other exhibitions happening this month, or uh, events happening this month. And Billy is going to say something. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sort of might be overstepping the mark a little bit here, but I'm working on a project with the Imperial War Museum called Walking with Ghosts. And it's going to be taking place in Folkestone over three days in November. And oh. I like a lot of what Sasha's work expresses. And I just would like to be able to speak a bit more to Sasha about maybe doing something that we could synchronize between Ukraine and Folkestone. I've spoken to the people who are running the project with the Imperial War Museum. And um, yeah, I'd like to continue the conversation if Sasha's up for it. Shall I uh, send both of you an email and then you can take it from there? Okay, Please. great. <laughs> Thank um, you. And then uh, the last thing is uh, uh, we are running, that is Wolf is Great, is running a month-long project throughout September. It's called 30 Days of Fronts, uh, and every 12 hours starting uh, midnight on uh, September 1. Uh, you will get, if you participate, a prompt uh, which um, nudges you to explore public space around you, uh, wherever you are. And then every 12 hours you get a new prompt. And you can participate through the Reef app, or you can just follow the Twitter account, 30 Days of Fronts. And you can read more about this on our website. So um, with that, I say again, thank you, Sasha. And uh, well, the last words are for you. Thank you all of you who joined this presentation. Thank you for all your comments and for your question. Thank you for everything. Yeah, um, yeah I, I would love to maybe 
show more works, but we have this limit of time, so sorry. And uh, but I try to do like all my best to just show different works from different times, from different strategy, just to give you some kind of uh, more information about how I'm working with the street, how I working, how I, how I walking, also, yeah. Yeah, and thank you for everybody. It was a pleasure for me. Yeah. No, the pleasure was all uh, ours. Thanks, Sasha. And yeah. see you all next time. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao.